It's really nice, you know, that you should be able to just run downstairs and make their sausage in the morning. I see. And um, from your place, what was in the This is a wonderful um, family, family owned um, pizzeria. It's not the original family anymore, but the nice thing about John's is that it was founded in the 1930s and they're known for their coal fired oven pizza. So unlike Joe's, which is a gas fired oven and a little bit more modern, they're still using the old school way of a, a coal fired oven. And they only sell pies. So you can't get a slice here at John's of Bleecker no Street. Slices. They usually have a sign that says no slices. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but they ha it's a beautiful um, place. You go inside, there's like wooden booths. And like if you look in the booths, like a lot of people have carved their names. So like you're looking at the famous customers. Some of the famous customers have carved their names like in the, in the wood of the booths. And it's fun, like you can watch it. We've watched them um, make our you know, pizza, because you can like, it, they do it right in front of the yeah. coal-fired oven. So it's really it's nice, I mean, you know, of course, it's, there's no indoor dining right now, so we can't go inside. <laughs> I'm gonna peek at their coal-fired oven. <laughs> Gotta get that, right? <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, you got it. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, this is perfect. Did you know it's National Pepperoni Pizza Day? You did. <laughs> so this one's getting in pepperoni and also what sausage? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. How long does it stay in there for? Four minutes. That's it? Wow, that's fast. Side peak. Oh my god. Wow. You can see all the people carve their names in the benches and booths and tables. Okay, I'm ready. Here it comes. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> wait, wait, it's a master at work. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> People still uh, eat, eat outdoors, like myself. Yes. Uh, I mean, we had our slice of pizza outside, so. <laughs> I I recommend another tour. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. We, in fact, we went over to his apartment, and he had. 
And and the secret to why they're still here is they do own the building. Uh, yeah. Are they also tenants? Do they do are people living in apartments here? They 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 live in Staten Island now. The family okay. moved to Staten Island, but they used to live above the store years ago. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it's brothers. It's all brothers that work in that like their grandparents had founded it. And they told us when they first started working in the butcher shop yeah. that their father would only let them sweep, like sweep the sawdust. They weren't allowed to like cut any meat or even go anywhere near the butcher block or a knife. Oh, wow. And once they knew how to sweep the floor well, you finally graduated them, okay, you know, now you can, you know, cut this, you know, like maybe in a less expensive piece of meat. And little by little, they, you know, they learn from the bottom up. I'll hold you from the side because I want to show people all it is. That's why there's a lot of cooking fine possible images. So it was cutting through the middle of the road. So yeah, you can appreciate it now from this way. Oh, whoa. So okay. yeah, that's it. It's a little that's triangle. It. Do you see that? Yeah, it's tiny. So the whole thing of why you have these strange little triangular properties is that New York created them when you were building something. They have a subway line right like now, the IRT. Yeah. And I mean, that's what I call it. You know, back in the day. It was the IRT. Like, right, it was the IRT. Wait, no. even in the 1990s, people called it the IRT? But back in the oh, no. back in the 70s, 70s, you still called it. I mean, that's that's my era. Okay. Um, you still called it the IRT and the BMT and all that stuff. But and Seventh Avenue was built also around the same time. Seventh Avenue the... was constructed, I guess, would be in. I mean, the oldest IRT station I think is in the 1930s. So I would I would say probably around that time. Yeah, Robert well, Moses. Oh yeah, they can hear it. So uh, are we going inside the store? No, well, there's, no, there's no inside. Greenwich Locksmiths is the smallest freestanding building in Manhattan with its own lot number. It's only 125 square feet. The owner, Philip Morillaro, bought the building in 1980. Besides its unique small size, the other amazing thing about the shop is its whimsical metal mosaic facade, which is covered with a lattice work of over 10,000 keys. Philip designed the mosaic himself and completed it in panels, which he affixed to the building. Each key had to be welded in four different places so that nobody could ever steal a key from the facade. Extra good. Philip also specializes in safe cracking and is one of the few people familiar with cracking open old cast iron vaults. One visit a locksmith. I know this sounds like a very obvious question, but for people who might not know, well, what's the purpose of a locksmith? I mean, when you need keys to get in your apartment, you yeah. need keys for your bicycle lock, you need keys yeah. for just about anything. Right. And the thing with, with Philip is that we we love to get our keys made here because I don't know if you ever went into like just any old kind of place, but um, sometimes you get a key made and you get home and it doesn't really work. Like you have to jiggle it or like like something. Or you end up breaking it sometimes. Right, yeah. something's wrong with it. What Philip told us is that's not going to ever happen here because oh, just... Philip and his son really are the only ones that that work here and they calibrate their instruments like every single day. He said the, the key to making a good key yeah. is that the instruments that they're using to like do the cutting and, and matching of it uh, have to be calibrated. So oh. that's what's important. He said decalibrate. Oh, so there's craftsmanship. Yes. And you can see everything. This is it. It's really you know, a one man operation because really nobody else is fitting back here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Square feet. That's oh, why. Hey, that's that. why it's the smallest. Uh, no. So one of the one of the people on YouTube live was asking, "Is there a basement level?" I'm like, "No. This is it. This okay. is this is the entire well, okay, storefront." You're, you're looking at it. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Say hi to Philip for us. When you think of Greenwich Village, like, you know, the tree-lined streets, to me, this is just a, just a
just a really, really pretty street, Concord Street. So the liquor store that we're visiting in our Christmas spirit here. The final stop on this tour. Exactly. It was Paula Oliveri liquor. And it was actually founded by an Italian immigrant. So, um, but they're known for their large selection of Spanish. Yeah. Wait, say that again, Carl. I couldn't the train. Oh, Casa Oliveri um, is one of the oldest liquor stores in New York City. And you can see this beautiful, this is like gold leaf lettering. So this is an art form <laughs> onto itself that you, you know, you hand paint the lettering on the window with gold leaf. So it's done by hand. <laughs> yes, you can see Dave's Sign Company. Oh, wow. We love the, old, the script lettering. You know, we're big fans of script writing. Yeah, James, you were telling me that <laughs> yeah. this was a, a, one of the inspirations for the photo Genesis, book. Genesis, yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, because we were always looking at, like, the hand-painted signs in the windows and neon signs. Like, it was always, you know, we were very attracted to that. So we love Cosmo very not only for its hand-painted sign, but we went inside and told us, oh, we're one of the oldest liquor stores. Look at our license number. And I'm like, L429. So it New York State, because when you're licensed in New York, it's not just New York City, yeah. it's New York State. I think the number one liquor license was given to Macy's, actually. Wow. Macy's had a liquor store that, um, because they were big, powerful, you know, and wealthy, even in the 1930s, when Prohibition ended, they got the first liquor license in New York State to sell liquor legally again. So there was liquor stores before Prohibition, but they had to, then they were totally relicensed and like given a number system, all happened after Prohibition. So they were number 429, like in oh, all yeah, of New York. A, a, a few thousand. Right, right. <laughs> Right, wow. so that's like a just like kind of like a big deal. Like it doesn't sound like a no, low number, but for it us, is. <laughs> it is a low number, and like one of the ones that's still in existence today. And, and their liquor sign, the, this this the neon sign, yeah. Right, the overhanging one is older than the one that's on the facade of the building. So this one is new. Yeah, and you can see that sign is called what's grandfather in. Oh, it wouldn't be allowed in this day and age because it hangs out more than 18 inches from the side of the building. Uh oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it yeah, might be a little, a little bit of a safety hazard, but right. I think they take care of it. They don't allow um, a sign to hang out past 18 inches now from mm -hmm. the facade of the building. You know that, but because this existed before that, you know, regulation went in effect, they're allowed to keep it. So it's called grandfathered in. Mm. Plus, they have the beautiful liquor Calza Oliveri. Uh, and we love the... the oh, Oliviera. Oliviera. <laughs> we yeah. say it wrong. I always say it wrong. <laughs> yeah. But the, it's funny because you can see, like, some of them, some of the neon is out, like the fine. That used to be lit up. That lost its neon. And then even though some of the lettering, like the ORS and liquors is out right now. People don't realize that in New York, it's very hard to maintain these beautiful neon signs mm -hmm. because... Every time it snows or it rains, it shorts out like a, uh, one of the transformers oh, that yeah. you know operate the, with the neon, and it's very expensive to maintain. So it's a real labor of love. That's why you don't see that many anymore. Because even if it's an older business, sometimes they get rid of their neon sign because it's such a big upkeep. I mean, sometimes like thousands and thousands of dollars to maintain them just every year. That's impressive. Yeah, and there's so, so few neon makers nowadays. Exactly, exactly. So really, it's a, it's a, unfortunately, like a dying sort of art form. Oh, he is. Oh, look, he gets a treat. Oh, God. Now, this is the best liquor store on earth because oh, thank they, you. Oh, awesome. they also think of treats for the doggies. Yes, <laughs> How are you today? Oh, we're fantastic. Thank you so much. Small businesses in the area. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah so I'm telling you, them. you know that that you're one of the, you have one of the oldest liquor licenses. Yes, we oh. were the like the 429. 400, 429 after prohibition. Uh, the store's been here since like the 1930s. Wow. You know. uh, we still have a neon sign because we're grandfathered. Because <laughs> 
West I was Village explaining is now, all that. The West Village is a historic area, and you can't have neon anymore, but if you have it, you can keep it, and every year we get a illuminated sign permit that comes from New York City that allows us to compete the, you know, the, the neon sign, and, uh, and we're just, we're happy to be here. And I see, I love the old trim oh, around, because yeah, this the is the original. Molding, yeah. I have a customer here, so. Oh, go, go right ahead, yeah, sorry. All right. Oh, yeah. You can save a lot, and they can insure your car. To me, so we're back to being Italian. <laughs> so, so you made a you made a right a full yeah, right. a, full, a circle. full circle. Right. But that's what I was saying. They do have a lot of um, still Portuguese wines. Oh, a lot of Portuguese. Do you guys deliver? Yes, we York? deliver. Uh, yep, we deliver in Manhattan up to 59th Street and down to as far as World Trade. Wonderful. And what do you recommend for people for the holidays? Uh, for, for, uh, champagne. Oh no, champagne. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to our channel and hit the thumbs up and notification bell so that YouTube can recommend our video to others and grow our channel. We're trying to reach 10K subscribers so that Hudson can get his own merchandise with his cute little face on it. If you want to take it a step further to support our channel, you can send us a one-time donation via PayPal or join our Patreon page where you become a member and get bonus content, extra perks like behind the scenes photo, ex exclusive video, all extra good stuff. Thanks guys and be safe. Bye guys. Bye guys.